This is the parable of the great banquet. Ah, look at this, a beautiful green carpet. It reminds me of green grass and the leaves on the trees and even Christmas trees. Ah, what is this? It looks like a present. It must be special, it's golden. It might be a parable. Parables have lids. Yes, this is a parable. It has a lid. is this? It is a table. We'll put it here. Once there was someone who was so amazing, he told great stories and did such amazing things, people started to follow him. And as the people followed him, he told them of the kingdom of heaven. And they were not sure what that was, so they asked him, can you tell us what the kingdom of heaven is? And he said, I will tell you a parable. Once a man wanted to have a great banquet for all of his friends. And so he told his servants, Bring everything to the table, lots of food. And so they started with the light. And then they brought the food. There was fruit. And there was vegetables. And there was meat. And there was poultry and even fish and of course bread and something to drink some wine then the man said please servants invite my guests to come in and so the servants went to the guests. But the first guest said, Oh, I've just brought a beautiful field and I must go and check it out. Uh, please excuse me, I can't come to the banquet today. The second guest was invited and he said, Oh, I'm sorry, I've just brought five oxen and I must see how this team works. Please excuse me, I cannot come to the banquet. And another guest was invited and he said, Oh, I'm sorry, I just got married and I cannot come to the banquet. Please excuse me. Well, this made our great man angry and sad and he said to the servants go go out into the streets and find for me all the people find the poor people and invite them to my banquet and find the people who are maimed and invite them to my banquet and invite the blind people so that they can have a banquet with me. But there was still some room, and so our guests should fill the place. And so he sent the servants out to the highways and the roads, and he said, find anyone you can and bring them all here so that they can join in our great feast. And so the travelers came. My, I wonder what it was like to sit down to all of this special food. I wonder what it was like to ask to be excused because you 
couldn't come that day. I wonder what all the people chose to eat. Marianne, thanks for telling us that story. And uh, it's very interesting to see these props. Can you tell me about uh, how these stories work? Well, each, each story has its own uh, box or, or even its own shelf. And uh, there are stories from Godly Play which introduce the children to the Old Testament. Um, mostly those are done in a box of sand so they know that they took place in the desert. And then we have the New Testament stories, which include the parables. And the parables are in golden boxes, so that the children understand that these are very special stories. Each box has a lid, so it can um, be like a bit of a mystery. And, and that's important when you're thinking about the parables, because they are a bit mysterious. Um, we have all sorts of things to help children understand how the Christian church world actually works. So we follow uh, a liturgy um, which is very similar to what happens in church. We sing a song, we invite the children to respond, um, we say Christ is with us and they respond back and also with you and they can always see the nativity they can always see the stories about the resurrection and the ascension and the, the fact that Christ is the Good Shepherd um, so after we show our story from the story box the children are invited to either tell another story, repeat this story, or maybe create something. Um, they can paint, they have Play-Doh. Um, there's very few directed crafts. It, we allow the children to just express themselves how they wish. goes everywhere with the smoke and though we can't see it anymore it's still with us and then we gather together and say a prayer of thanks and we usually have a little snack um, highlight of the morning and quietly return to church in time to receive communion in time to receive okay. communion join their parents um, join in the uh, the singing of the the recessional and um, so they do see some parallels between what's happening here and what's happening in the bigger church um, and certainly young children respond differently than older children sometimes we've had 10 11 and 12 year olds who see the connections very quickly and younger children, it's it's a process. I'm seeing that uh, the way uh, we're seated, you could I could imagine a circle of children right around here. How many children could you manage to have in a circle like that? Well, I mean, some Sundays we have many, um, mm -hmm. and I remember one Sunday when we had twelve, mm -hmm. um, and it was a pretty exciting Sunday, and we pulled out all the cushions and everybody gathered around. Um, some, some Sundays we have one or two children, but even if there's just one child or two children, there's 
they're they're so engaged. Um, the other morning, Sunday morning, a young fellow came in and he, he looked at the cross up here and he immediately told me, Christ died on the cross and the people were very sad. And after he came to life again. And I thought, well, that's pretty profound. <laughs> and you certainly have a good understanding. So I, it, was, it always amazes me, the things that they can tell us. Yeah. So this format of teaching is called Godly Play. Can you, can you tell us about what that is? Uh, well, you know, Godly Play is, um, it's based on the premise that every Christian wants to find and the teachers will uh, do play-based learning. So that's where godly play comes from. Um, it's it's a, a way of bringing children to the idea that everything they do, even when they're playing, that God is with them and they should be kind of thinking about that and trying to live the best way they can. So that's the sort of the premise, the, the story. Um, Do you have, did you have some kind of special training? I noticed how you, your focus was very intently on the props here. Yes. Uh, is that a special training about how to tell a story? Yes, and in godly play, you, um, you don't engage the children the way you would in a in a in a kindergarten setting, where you would ask them questions or or get them to um, speculate on something, the story is special and it's told by the leader. And um, I, my background is teaching, so I, I had to turn my head around a little bit on that. But the focus is on the story, mm -hmm. and and you keep. The focus on the story even if there are little interruptions or diversions or whatever you focus on the story the focusing on the word is very very important mm. for all of us um, and so it's a good beginning in that way yeah so um, with the story here as with the stories we tell in church we're always trying to get them to meet our own experiences and the times that we're in so uh, given that we're in this season of All Saints Day and All Souls Day and Remembrance, uh, what do you think might be the connectors between this story of the Great Banquet and uh, our feasts of, of this time? Yes, I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, we think about the Kingdom of Heaven and uh, I think, I think our, our goal is to live a, a good life, to, to strive to do God's work here and I think what we eventually hope is that that will bring us even closer and we will be with God after our our death um, and so you know it, it, our our uh, our lovely host here he invites all his friends who obviously have great wealth. I mean, they have all these fields and animals and, and they're married and they, they sort of have the everything. And they're too busy. They don't come. And so our host invites everyone, poor people, lame people, people who are somehow disadvantaged. He welcomes them to his table. He welcomed everybody to the table, but some turned away and some do not. So this dinner might be like um, God's all-encompassing embrace of all of us, of all souls, uh, to be welcomed by God. Welcomed by God, and especially welcomed into the great feast. And and we think of a feast as, as food, but I think there's there's a lot more in a feast uh, there's companionship, there, there's uh, 
celebration, there's, there's warmth, there's um, just the idea that you are given great gifts uh, and, and that you can share them. What a, what a wonderful idea that is. Marianne, thank you for uh, giving us an example. I think this might be an example of how stories go and that uh, there, there are many mysteries in this room and all these boxes uh, that would uh, be exciting to our children and, uh, and to our adults as we get to know them. So thank you. Thank you.